Good morning, Pine Castle. We are so thankful that you've joined us for our Easter Sunday live stream. He is risen. He is risen indeed. While you're watching, we invite you to engage in the comments. Be sure to visit our website, pinecastleumc.com, to stay informed and get connected and follow us on social media. We're at Pine Castle UMC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. In just a moment, we'll have a time of worship, followed by an inspiring message from Pastor Scott. But first, would you pray this prayer with me? Lord, thank you for loving us more than life itself. God, life is hard and uncertain. So much pain, hurt, and heartache seems to surround us. And yet, knowing this, you still willingly gave up your life and became God with us and God who rescues us. Thank you. Because of your sacrifice, we can spend eternity with you. There is no pain you cannot conquer, no hurt you cannot heal, and no life you cannot transform. Your death and resurrection prove that nothing is impossible for you and that we are more than conquerors because of you. Today and every day, help us to fix our hearts and minds on you. And as we do, please give us more of your joy, hope, and peace. We love you, and we want to worship you. Amen.
I'm being all of you. 
your love renovate and I sin washed away. I yawn to you. I yawn to you, Jesus. Good morning, kids, and happy Easter. Do you have a fun family day planned for today? Are you going on an Easter egg hunt to find Easter eggs with surprises like candy inside? That makes for a really good day, I know. But I wanna tell you about the surprise of the first Easter, about the gift of the sacrifice of Jesus. Let me explain it to you in a different way. Let's say that this hand is you and me. God created us and God chose us. God loves us very much, but he hates sin. Our sin separated us from him. And let's pretend that this egg represents our sin and all the sin we do. We choose to disobey our parents sometimes we might lie, say a mean word or two, have a really bad attitude. Those are all sins. Remember, this is us and God loves us, but God hates sin. This is Jesus in this hand and Jesus came as a human being to live a perfect life, to show us how to live and love each other. Jesus was sinless. But the Bible also says that Jesus took our sin upon him. He took on our sin and he went to that Christ and he died for your and my sin. And that was a very sad day. But that's not the end of the story. Jesus' friends took him and buried him in a tomb and they thought that he was gone forever and they'd never be able to spend time with him again. But the good part of that story is on the first day, Jesus was in the tomb. On the second day, Jesus was still in the tomb. But on the third day, the tomb was empty. There was an angel there proclaiming, he's not here anymore, he's alive. Jesus is not in here. That was the best surprise about Easter. You see, Jesus wasn't in that tomb. Jesus was alive. And because Jesus was alive then, Jesus is still alive now. Because he's alive, we can have a relationship with him. We may not see him, but he is there and he hears our prayers. He watches over us day and night. When we are scared, he will help us be brave. When we are sad, he will make us happy and give us joy. He will make us well when we are sick or hurt. We can talk to him anytime, anywhere, any place. You see, that's the best part about Easter. That is the greatest surprise, is Jesus is alive. He is not dead. Let me pray with you. Why don't you repeat after me today? Dear Jesus, thank you for coming and loving me, for being a sacrifice so that I could live forever with you in heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Sandra. That was uh, beautiful to see the kids uh, involved in this uh, Easter, Easter service. Thank you so much. We want to just uh, take a time now for our, our offering. Uh, on the screen is our weekly budget and our giving. And for the past couple of weeks, it's going to be up there for you to see. Uh, I am delighted to tell you that we don't have to fear. We don't have to worry. God is in charge of every detail. And I want to thank all of the uh, Pine Castle family, all the attenders for taking care of our needs. Even in the midst of a terrible situation, God has proven himself faithful. And I want to pray a blessing over you and your family and your business today. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your blessing upon God's people. Thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you, God, that our trust is in you. And we look to you today, God, to meet every need. I pray for every family. As represented, I pray for every business. God, we trust in you today, and we thank you that you're going to meet every need that we have. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen and amen. We sing hallelujah, we 
sing hallelujah The Lamb is overcome We sing hallelujah We sing hallelujah We sing hallelujah The Lamb is overcome We sing hallelujah We sing hallelujah In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without, Without him, him, nothing was made that has been made. In, in him, him was the life, and that life was the light of man. A good person. A man. Someone who lived a long time ago. He was in the world, and though the world was made, made through him, the world did not recognize him. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. He was a nice guy. A man in a book. Doesn't matter. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. I thought a lot about it. I go back and forth. Was he the son of God? Yet to all who received him, to those who believed his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. He is the way. The truth. The life. He's God. My king. My savior. Hi, everybody. This is Pastor Scott George. I'm a pastor at uh, Pine Castle United Methodist Church. And let me uh, wish you a very happy Easter. Uh, we are here in the sanctuary. And um, I think for the first time in our 100-year history, this is the only time we've uh, done an Easter service via live stream uh, without people in attendance. D David, go ahead and take a look around. And let me show you what I'm preaching to. I'm preaching to an empty church. And it's kind of interesting, a little different, and I prefer to, prefer to have uh, the church filled uh, with good-looking saints this Easter Sunday morning. But we are here today, and uh, we're going to have a wonderful Easter service. We've enjoyed wonderful worship, a wonderful time. It's, it's amazing. In the past couple of weeks, um, you can sense the presence of the Lord. And uh, even when people are all over Central Florida, we come together. Uh, PineCastleUMC.com, and we worship together, and it's just as genuine and real as an authentic as it is when we're all together. Now, don't get me wrong. I miss uh, us being together, but for these next couple weeks, we're going to make the best of it, and we're just going to dive in here today to God's Word. Uh, go to Matthew chapter 21. 
And uh, we're going to look at verse 10. And you're going to see behind me these beautiful letters. And by the way, thanks to Tom and Shirley Radowski for putting this together. They did a great job. The phrase, Jesus is, and then a blank. Jesus is, and then a blank. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 21. If you're with me, say amen. Uh, It says here in verse 10, Matthew chapter 21, verse 10, it says, When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred. And they asked, who is this? And the crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. I love that where they say, who is this? And the crowds answered, this is Jesus. So today on this Easter Sunday, we're going to answer this question, Jesus is. And your response to this question, your response to this this statement will determine your destiny. Your answer to this question will decide eternity. Your answer to this question and this statement will determine your present state and your future state. And, and today, I'm not going to answer for you. You're going to have to be the one that's going to have to answer this question and this statement. Jesus is. You can't rely on your parents to answer it for you. You can't rely on your pastor to answer it for you. Each and every person has to answer this statement themselves individually. So I want to ask you today, who Jesus is and what would you say? Now, you're going to see here on my left, you're going to see a big blank. You got a blank uh, of of, uh, post-it note, and it says Jesus is with a big blank. And we're going to fill that in today. Now, let me tell you a little bit of history about uh, these post-it notes. Now, uh, if, if we were to have a, a regular Easter service, I was going to give everybody in attendance another gift. I've given so many gifts over the years, and I was going to give everybody a post-it note. I can tell that you are um, uh, overwhelmed by my generosity. Just a little post-it note. You know, I did a little bit of uh, history on the invention of the post-it note. Uh, it was invented by a, a guy by the name of Arthur Frey in the 1970s, and he was an inventor for 3M, but he was also a choir director. And he got frustrated uh, with these little pieces of notes and a paper that he would put in his hymnal, and they would fall out all the time. And he said, there's got to be a better way for me to keep track of all the different songs we're going to sing on Sunday morning. So he went to his company, 3M, and, 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 and pitched his idea about a Post-it note. It took him about 10 years to finally... Uh, give the go-ahead to begin, to begin producing these things. And you know now that every year 3M produces 50 billion post-it notes. So what we're going to do with the post-it note here today is we're going to fill in a couple blanks. So we're going to answer the question, Jesus is. And the first fill in the blank that we're going to give you in just a few moments uh, is, is going to be our first response to who Jesus is. Now, these, these are my answers. This is what I say Jesus is. You're going to have to have your own answer. You're going to have to have your own uh, definition of who you think Jesus is. But my definition is, I'm going to give three of them to you today. Number one, Jesus is peace. You know, a lot of people say that Jesus is a, a good person. Some would say that Jesus is a great teacher. Some would say he's a great prophet or a great healer. But my question to you today is, who is Jesus to you? And the first point of my Easter message today is, look over here to my left and your right. Jesus is peace. I love what Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 27. He says, peace I leave with you, peace I give you, not as the world gives. Do not let, let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. You see, to me, when I respond to that statement, Jesus is, my first response is Jesus is peace. Now think about it. Jesus is peace. Peace is having courage in the midst of crisis. And I can't think of a better time for us to have peace than today. The world, many people are just saying the world's falling apart. They're wondering if this is the end. People are anxious. People are stressed. People are filled with anxiety and fear. Uh, uh, Over 6 million people just this week lost their jobs across the United States. And if there there was a time where we need peace, today is that time. And for me, Jesus 
is peace. It's a peace that the world can't give. It's a peace that only he can give. And he says, don't let your hearts be afraid. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. I think it's interesting that uh, do not fear is over 365 times mentioned in the Bible. One for every day of the year. Why? Because we fear and we're afraid. But to me, Jesus is peace, peace, wonderful peace. Many of you know that for the past um, six months, uh, our family has been through a, uh, a real traumatic ordeal with our son, Austin, who uh, fell and, and had a traumatic brain injury. We were living in Miami for about a month and a half, moved to Atlanta for another two, three months. And so uh, overall, uh, we, were, we were gone for about six months. And it was a terrible experience, a traumatic time. Uh, living in Miami and Atlanta and flying back to Orlando, and it was, just a, it was just a mess. But can I tell you this? In my darkest moments, in the times when uh, Austin's life was hanging in the balance, I can tell you that in the midst of that chaos, there was tremendous peace. I wasn't mad. I wasn't angry. I wasn't upset. I knew that God was in charge, and he filled me with peace, wonderful peace. And I pray today. That is, I'm asking you this question that you'll be able to come up with your own answer, your own statement of what Jesus is to you. I can't, I can't answer it for you, but for me, I can tell you, number one, that Jesus is peace. Let me go to the second one. Jesus is not only peace, but I want to read to you a scripture where uh, I believe that my answer is that not only is Jesus peace, but Jesus is hope. Hope. What is hope? Hope is an expectation of future Good, And I want to declare to you today, as bad as things are, there is a God who gives us hope. Jesus is not only peace, but number two, Jesus is hope. Say that word with me, hope. Hope is, a, is an expectation of future good. And I'm glad that hope is in the Bible because I believe that even in times like this, God fills us with supernatural hope. Hope. Hope is an expectation of future good. And as bad as things are right now, things are going to get better, and that is hope. And to me, Jesus is not only peace, Jesus is hope. Listen to this verse of Scripture in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 10. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and help you, not plans to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. Jesus, to me, is not only peace, but Jesus is hope. And even in the midst of this tough time that we are faced as a, as a, as a country, as a world, as a community, as a church, in the midst of that, I have a future expectation of good. Why? Because to me, Jesus is hope. Many of you know that uh, on, on uh, this past Monday, I was asked to do a, a short little interview on uh, WDBO, uh, 96.5. Uh, Scott Inez is, has been a dear friend of mine for many, many years. He's a great voice and a great voice of compassion and, and just a wonderful man. I love he and his family. And he asked me to uh, just come on the radio and, and really speak to the people of Central Florida. It was about a 15-minute uh, uh, interview. And then at the very end, he said, he said, Pastor Scott, would you please give a message to Central Floridians that are struggling, that are fearful, that are anxious, that are stressful, uh, people that need hope, would you please give an answer? And I gave this answer. I told the, the, the listeners to, um, to get out a dollar bill. I told them to get out a $5 bill. I told them to get out a $20 bill. I, I told them to get a $100 bill, although there's probably not a lot of $100 bills these days. So a lot of people probably just had a $1 bill. And I told the listeners, I said, I want you to get that dollar bill and I want you to turn it over in the back and I want you to read to me the four words that can fill us with hope even in our darkest moments. And here's the four words I said, in God we trust. You see, when you put your hope in God, when you put your trust in in God, you're able to weather any storm. You're able to face any kind of crisis. Why? Because our trust, watch this, our hope is not in the government. Our hope is not in getting a stimulus check. Our hope is not in uh, uh, our employer. Our hope is not in the economy. My trust is in God. And I declare to you on this Easter Sunday, Jesus is not only peace, but number two, Jesus is hope. And if you'll put your trust 
in him, you will be able to weather any storm. Why? Because your trust is in God. There was a, there was a little song that I used to sing to my kids when they were younger. I, I put them to bed, and they were afraid of the boogeyman, or they were afraid of someone underneath their bed. And, and I, I taught them this song, and it's, uh, it's uh, from Psalms 56. And it says, when I am afraid, I will trust in you. And I came up with a little song, and it goes something like this. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. Psalm 53, verse 6. You see, there's nothing wrong with being afraid. David said, when I am afraid. We are going to be afraid. If you watch CNN, if you watch Fox News, if you watch ABC, you're going to be afraid. But David said, when I am afraid, watch this, I will trust in you. In God we trust. And when you have that philosophy... God gives you not only peace, but he also gives you hope. In God, we trust. So number one, Jesus is peace. Number two, Jesus is hope. And then here's number three. Here's a good one. And this is perfect for Easter Sunday. Not only is Jesus peace, not only is Jesus hope, but here it is. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Jesus is alive. Not only is Jesus a peace, not only is Jesus hope, but you can see on the last post-it note over here to my left and your right, Jesus is alive. Say that with me. Jesus is alive. You see, he's not only our peace, he's not, a, not only our hope, but Jesus is alive, and that's the reason why we celebrate this Easter service and Easter celebration. There's a gentleman by the name of Alfred Hickley. And in the 1930s, Alfred was a, was a Bible teacher, and he was confronted by an atheist. And the atheist confronted him and, and, and asked him, how can you prove to me that Jesus is alive? And in 1930, Alfred Hinckley, after that confrontation, went home, and he wrote one of the great hymns of the church. It's called, He Lives, He Lives. What a beautiful song that is. And, and, and I want to sing that for you. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You asked me how I know he lives. He lives. My heart. I love that phrase. You ask me how I know he lives. I don't know how else to tell you. He just lives within my heart. You see, Jesus to me is number one, he's peace. Number two, Jesus is hope. And the beautiful story of Easter is that Jesus is alive. You ask me how I know he lives because he lives within my heart. Now we're going to go now to uh, our worship team, and Lisa's going to lead us in a beautiful song called In the Presence of Jehovah. And when you run to the name of God, when you run to Jehovah this Easter Sunday, you will find that in his presence there is peace, there is hope, and there is life when you turn to him and you run to him. So let's worship together and let's run to that name this Easter Sunday morning.
We hope this service has been a blessing to you today. We all long to be physically reunited as a church body, but we can stay connected even as we're separated. Your pastors and staff are available to answer your questions, offer support, and pray with you. Visit pinecastleumc.com and click on PC Helps to get in contact with us. We'll also continue to provide opportunities for online worship, and we hope you can join us again next Sunday at 1030 a.m. Before we dismiss, let me pray for you. Father, just as your son Jesus burst forth from that tomb, may new life burst forth from us and be demonstrated in acts of kindness to a hurting world. Open our eyes, Lord, and give us wisdom to understand how to bear your image in a world that's watching. Bless the families of Pine Castle with your protection and your provision. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed, Pine Castle. See you next Sunday.